Hello everyone, welcome to video 4 of chapter 4. In this video, we'll go through several examples of finding the dual, and then we'll make observations. So let's begin with the first example. This is the example 4.2.2 in your textbook. So we need to find the dual for the following LP problem. The problem is the following. Minimize this function here, subject to three restricted variable and two constraints that are both bigger than equal sign. Okay, so take a look at this problem. We see that this problem is in min form, so it's a min problem, and we can simply um, um, use kind of a, the reverse of the definition because we know the the dual of a dual is the problem itself. So the dual of a mean problem is the corresponding max problem. Okay, so the mean would be maximizing. So I would add y1 here and the y2 here. So I'll have two variables and then the objective function is this column dot product the y, so 6y1 minus 4y2, subject to two restricted variable, and the number of constraints here would match the number of unknowns in the original problem. And then I would go down the column to add them up, so 8y1 plus 1y2 would be, I'll switch the sign less than or equal to 12 is coming from here. Okay, and the second one is 3y1 and 0y2 shall be less than what's in front of x2, that's 9. And the third one is 5y1 minus 3y2, this one here, shall be less than the coefficient in front of x3, which is negative 2. So we see that's a um, max form. Okay, so we can um, verify our result by the following remark. So if we shall start with the max problem here, and then we can form the dual, which is a main problem, by the definition in definition 3, and we will obtain this exactly. So um, since the dual problem and A is dual of B, may do is B is dual of A, then and this problem is the dual of this problem, okay? Okay, so that was a um, straightforward example. Now let's look at one example that's a little bit tricky. So that's 4.2.3 in the textbook. So we want to find the dual of this following problem. Maximize, that's fine, it's the um, objective function, restricted variables, and I have two constraints. So, first constraint is an inequality, and the second constraint has an equal sign. So that's the new thing here, that's why this is highlighted in red. Okay, and how do we handle that? So we know if we want to find the dual, there are two steps to take. The first step is to put the problem in max form, and that's what we'll do first. So we also have a trick to deal with the equal sign. Okay, so the max problem, the first constraint is fine, we need to deal with the second constraint. So the equal sign is breaking up into two inequality. One is the left hand side is less than or equal to the right hand side, and the second one is the left hand side is bigger than or equal to the right hand side. But then the inequality sign would be wrong, and then we would multiply a negative sign on both sides. So I get negative of this left hand side. You see, I switch all the signs, and then I can still have less than or equal to the negative of 20. Okay? So here the constraint 2 and 3 joined together would equal to this second constraint here. 
Now we have rewritten the original LP in the max form, and we can write out the duo following definition 3. OK, so we know the duo is now a mean problem. OK, we just simply follow the definition, so I'll be minimizing y1, y2, y3, and these are the constants on the right-hand side of the constraint, subject to, so there are three constraints of three y's. OK, this will be go down the first column, bigger than coefficient c1. This is go down the second column in front of x2, and that's the coefficient in front of x2 in the objective function, and then go down the third column and the coefficient there in front of x3. Okay, so that's a rather straightforward step. So what is interesting in this example is that let's look at um, y2 and y3. We see here I actually have y2 minus y3 if I take the 20 out. And then here I have y2 minus y3. Here, if I take the 2 out, I get y2 minus y3. And here, if I take the 3 out, I have y2 minus y3. Okay, so seems like y2 and y3 always appears together as a group, y2 minus y3. So we're going to group that. Okay, so this is basically um, a rewritten version of the previous one where I just regrouped y2 and y3 together. Okay? And now, since y2, y3 only occur together as y2 minus y3, I'm going to define the, this distance between these two as y4. And this seems familiar because in the past we have done this to unrestricted variables, right? These will be the artificial variables. So here I go back. If I define the difference between them as y4, then this y4 is an unrestricted variable. Okay, after I have done that, I clean up and then I row down the final form. So I have minimizing I have only two variables. I call it y1, y4. You can call this back to y2. It doesn't matter. Basically, you have two variables. And then subject to y1 is restricted. y4 is now unrestricted. Okay, the second variable. And then I collect the constraints here and, and put in y4. Okay, so you see this is uh, a minimization problem and with the one variable that's unrestricted where does this come from well do you remember where it came from okay and that leads to the remarks we want to make okay so remark a the restricted variable the second variable we call a y4 in the dual problem actually corresponds to that equal constraint in the original max problem. So an equal constraint in the problem will cause a unrestricted variable in its dual. Remark B, then we can think backwards since uh, the dual of a dual is the original problem, then an unrestricted variable in the original problem would in the end give you an equal constraint in its dual by simply going back in this previous example, thinking this is the original problem and the original max problem is the dual of that. Okay? All right, so. Um, Probably it is a good time to make a big summary and listing the relations of the dual problems. How are they relating to each other? We have found many of these, so let's list them. Okay, so here um, um, I have two problems that are dual of each other. Okay, so if one of them is a max problem, then the dual is the main problem. That's the first connection. 
Second, in the max problem, I have uh, less than inequality. Let's say the i-th constraint is a less than equal inequality. This would correspond to its dual. The i's variable will be restricted and non-negative. And then um, in the max problem, if I have an i's constraint which carries an equal sign, then that will correspond to an i's unrestricted variable, as we have seen in the last example. And let's look at the variables in the math max problem. Let's say the j's variable is non-negative, is restricted. And this would correspond to the constraint in the dual that will be the j's constraint would be bigger than equal inequality. And then for the j's um, variable, if it is unrestricted, then the this will correspond to the j's constraint in the main problem with an equal sign. That was uh, what we commented. Okay, and the coefficients for the objective function in the max problem would appear as the constant terms for the constraints in its dual in the main problem. And vice versa, the constant terms of the constraint in the max problem will now appear as the objective function coefficient in the main problem. And finally, um, the coefficient matrix, let's say for the max problem, is A. Then in its dual, the matrix is transposed. Okay? So, um, um, this table, this summary here, actually would be extremely helpful later on for you to work out homework problems of writing out the dual. You, you just simply follow all these um, relations here and you can quickly write out the dual. So in next video, we'll go through a couple of examples. Okay, so hope you enjoy this. I'll see you next time.